an investor or want to be one, you've probably heard that it's critical to rebalance your investment portfolio. Rebalancing is shifting investments, so you have the right balance of risk and reward to achieve your goals without sleepless nights. This podcast will review what investment rebalancing is, why it's essential for success, and six strategies to rebalance your portfolio, whether you're a novice or an experienced investor. Hey, friends, welcome back. I'm Laura Adams, an award-winning author, money speaker, founder of the Money Stack newsletter, and host of the Money Girl podcast with over 43 million downloads. When I'm not podcasting, I also work as an on-camera financial spokesperson, and I partner with select brands for PR and content marketing. As always, you can learn more and email me at lauradadams.com. And before we get started, if you're getting value from the free Money Girl content that we love creating, please consider submitting a five-star rating or podcast review. It's quick, it's easy to do, and it really means a lot to us. Also, if you have a comment or question about money, please leave it on our voicemail line by calling 302 364-0308. And I can also get your question by email if you want to visit lauradadams.com and use my contact page. I'd love to answer your question on a future show. Okay, so before we dig into investment rebalancing, we need to kind of step back and I want to discuss investment diversification first and talk about how diversification is related to rebalancing. So being a diversified investor means that you reduce potential risk by owning various assets that are not correlated, which means they don't move together when economic conditions change. Owning investments that react differently to events like changes in interest rates or changes in the housing market That helps smooth out risk over the long term. And when market conditions change, you want to own a mix of investments that are not all simultaneously affected by the same factors. For instance, if you only own, let's say, one or two domestic technology stocks, changes in the U.S. economy or the tech industry could cause your entire portfolio to plummet. However, having a diversified portfolio helps prevent losses in a single type of investment. When you own various classes of investments, some might lose value, others can hold steady or increase, which benefits your overall portfolio. You can diversify on many levels, such as your asset classes like stocks, bonds, real estate, and cash. With stocks, you can even diversify across company types, such as large capitalization, mid-cap, and small-cap stocks. You can also be diversified with your investment industries like energy, technology, and consumer goods, and even with geographies like owning domestic and foreign companies. So let's say you want your overall asset diversification to be 80% stocks, 15% bonds, and 5% cash. Now consider what happens when your stocks go on a tear and their prices increase. Well, your allocation would quickly drift, making stocks a more significant percentage of your portfolio. So over time, your desired 80-15-5 allocation, let's say it would become 85% stocks, 10% bonds, and 5% cash. Rebalancing is a way to shift your portfolio back to the original proportions you believe are suitable for your financial goals. So investment portfolio rebalancing means getting your diversification and asset allocation, like the mix of stocks and bonds, where you want them. Otherwise, your portfolio would continue drifting off your intended path and become increasingly risky. For instance, having a larger proportion of stocks or stock funds could make your overall portfolio too volatile and too risky for your liking. If the stock market dips, you could experience a greater loss than you're comfortable with. If you decide that owning 80% stocks, 15% bonds, and 5% cash is the right balance of mix and reward for you, periodically rebalancing to achieve that mix manages your risk, and it ensures you're moving forward with the right investments. And by the way, those percentages might be an appropriate allocation for some investors, but are not a recommendation for everyone. 
Every investor must first define their financial goals, their timeline, and their risk tolerance. In general, younger investors with decades to go before they need income from their investments can lean toward riskier assets like stocks. However, investors nearing or in retirement should reduce risk by owning a higher percentage of income investments like bonds and cash. Again, you have to choose investments based on your risk tolerance and be willing to stick to that thesis or proactively change your allocation based on new information or developments with your finances. So what are the pros and cons of investment portfolio rebalancing? Well, the primary benefit of rebalancing is maintaining your desired portfolio diversification and minimizing potential risk. By periodically reviewing your investments, you decide whether you're comfortable with any new allocation or want to make changes like increasing or decreasing your stock, bond, and cash holdings. The downside of rebalancing is that you may need to sell investments, which can generate taxable gains inside a brokerage account. However, investment gains get deferred inside tax-advantaged retirement accounts, such as a workplace plan or an IRA, so rebalancing never triggers taxes in those tax-advantaged accounts. So let's go through six strategies for rebalancing your investment portfolio. Now that you understand the importance of investment rebalancing, you may wonder, well, when should I do it? How often should I do it? And the goal with rebalancing isn't perfection because your desired allocation is always a moving target because investment prices constantly change. But let's go through six rebalancing strategies to consider. So number one is to rebalance while you're doing another financial task. Many investors rebalance when they're working on other financial tasks, like maybe it's when you're submitting your tax return. A second strategy is to rebalance before each year end. You might prefer to review your portfolio and rebalance, you know, right before the year ends. That also allows you to do tax loss harvesting to offset any taxable gains that selling investments could trigger. We are not going to go into details on tax loss harvesting, but it is simply a strategy where you sell losing investments to offset or reduce capital gains that are generated by selling profit profitable investments. A third strategy is to rebalance at a threshold. So you can also rebalance if you reach a threshold, like experiencing a 5% gain or loss in any asset class. However, be mindful that you shouldn't rebalance too frequently because you might respond too quickly to a short-term change. The fourth strategy is to rebalance as you invest. So let's say you regularly invest, like making monthly contributions to your workplace 401k or an IRA. You can review your portfolio for any overweighted asset classes. Then you can increase your purchases of underweighted assets. So let's say you notice that your stocks are getting high. You might choose to purchase bond funds instead of stock funds to make sure that you're getting back to that original allocation. Number five is to rebalance as you make withdrawals. So let's say you're retired and you're regularly making investment withdrawals to pay your bills. You can sell those investments that are overweighted to bring the portfolio closer to your original allocation. And you may not be able to rebalance completely in one month by, you know, either buying or selling investments, but you can certainly make progress regularly. And number six is to rebalance automatically with a robo-advisor. This is what I do. So if rebalancing seems like a hassle, consider using a robo-advisor. And I'll put a link to some of my favorites in the show notes. They do it for you automatically. They offer well-diversified investment options. They rebalance. They do tax loss harvesting and give you more features with very low management fees. They might ask you to complete a quiz to determine your goals and your risk tolerance when you set up your account, and then they'll choose various investments like exchange-traded funds in order to achieve your goals. However, you can manually change your investments and your risk level at any time. Then a robo-advisor typically periodically rebalances your holdings to keep your portfolio aligned with the goals that you set or later adjust. 
But let's say you're a do-it-yourself investor. You want to be a do-it-yourself rebalancer as well. The basic steps you'll need to follow are step number one, track your portfolio. You might keep your investments on a spreadsheet or use a dashboard in a financial app. And you can list them out with their current values and then note the percentage for each asset class, such as stocks or bonds or cash. Then you're going to compare that information on a regular basis to your ideal portfolio. So maybe you decide your ideal portfolio is 80% stocks and 20% bonds. You can compare that to your current percentages in your portfolio. And then the third step would be to make adjustments to your portfolio. Let's say it drifted down to 75% stocks and up to 25% bonds. In that case, it's time to rebalance by investing either new money in stocks or selling some bonds to buy stocks. So you return to your original 80-20 allocation. Remember that selling investments in a taxable brokerage for a gain means you're going to owe capital gains tax, but you know that's expected. Rebalancing often forces you to take some profits. Plus, there may be a trading fee or a commission to buy or sell certain funds and individual bonds. However, most brokerages don't charge for transactions on stocks and ETFs. And if you have a robo-investor automatically rebalancing for you, they're just going to include those transaction fees and, you know, take them right out of your account. And suppose you become more risk averse or more risk tolerant. Well, in that case, you can always adjust your allocation by manually rebalancing or adjusting your risk settings with a robo-investing platform that automatically rebalances for you. So I hope this has been helpful if you haven't been rebalancing your portfolio or have an investing platform that is automatically doing it for you. It's something that is super important for keeping your investments on track and making sure you're going to achieve the level of risk that you're ultimately comfortable with. Before we go, here's a quick reminder to subscribe to The Money Stack. That's my weekly newsletter when you visit lauradadams.com. It's filled with money tips, tools, news, challenges, things I enjoy. You can subscribe for free or become a paid member with access to live educational events. I hope to see you there. That's all for now. I'll talk to you soon. Until then, here's to living a richer life. Money Girl is a quick and dirty tips podcast, and I want to thank our fantastic team. Steve Rickyberg audio engineers the show. Brandon Gaitchis is our director of podcasts. Holly Hutchins is our digital operations specialist. Morgan Christensen is our advertising operations specialist. And Davina Tomlin is our marketing and publicity associate. Mm-hmm.